is so soft. <laughs> Hello my youths and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, today we're going to be talking about something that's a little bit hard to talk about, but um, it's something I've wanted to talk about for a while. I made a video on it one time, um, but I never really talked about it exactly in, you know, in the actual sense. And I thought that this would be a good time to do it because I'm in college, you know, I'm doing my own stuff. I had a little bit of time and I thought I'd just give it a whirl. Before we get into this, uh, one of my really cool friends, Abby, <laughs> said she wanted to design me some merch. So I thought that'd be funny. So she did and it's really cute. Um, this is very soft. And then like, look at the back. Isn't that cute? But yes. <laughs> um, it's super cute. It's super soft. There's also like stickers. Well, a sticker, which is very cute. <laughs> and I got that too, but I have, it hasn't come in yet. And a mug, which is so cute. And then there's, yeah, stuff like that. So if you guys wanted to get anything just because you wanted to, I don't know. I did because I just, it, I thought it was cute. I'm very excited about it. This is super soft. I like it a lot. <laughs> um, yep. But anyways, if you want that, I'll link it and you don't have to, but if you just wanted to give it a look, it's it's super cute stuff. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, so yeah, OCD Awareness Week is October 17th. And for those of you who don't know what OCD is, um, OCD stands for Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Um, most people who hear OCD think the stereotypical idea of, oh, someone who's really clean or a neat freak. Well. <laughs> You look around my dorm room, you can kind of tell that that's not me. I am not a clean freak in any sense of the word, but surprise, I do have OCD. I was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder when I was 11 or 12 after um, I had extreme germophobia. I went for a long time where I wouldn't eat certain foods because I thought they were like contaminated and would make me sick. I would spend like hours just sitting at the table observing every part of my food and not being able to stomach it because I felt like I was going to get sick because of it. Um, you know, there's a lot of other stuff that went into it too, but um, I think the, the main point, like the main, I guess, breaking point, I went to Six Flags with my family and I was like, my mom got like nachos or something and I was, I wouldn't eat them because my hands were dirty because I hadn't washed them. And, um, so when we went to the doctor for my yearly checkup, she talked to them about that and I was diagnosed with OCD. Ooh, <laughs> some other stuff too, but that's for another video. Um, so obsessive compulsive disorder is a anxiety disorder where, let me look up the actual definition. I know a lot about this, but I don't wanna tell you guys <laughs> anything like wrong. Okay. I'm gonna read um, this. I'm gonna link down below this website that I have used a lot whenever doing more research about OCD. It's iocdf.org, and um, yeah, but I'll link that. Obsessive compulsive disorder is a mental disorder that affects people of all ages and walks of lives, and occurs when people get caught in a cycle of obsessions and compulsions. Obsessions are unwanted, intrusive thoughts. Um, and compulsions are behaviors that engage, like, to make you feel better. So things you'll do repeatedly to try to get rid of these obsessive thoughts or intrusive thoughts. Well, I always see those, like, memes that are like, oh, I'm so OCD, blah, 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 you know. And that's something that's bothered me for a long time. And I've kind of come to terms with because people are going to be people and they're going to do whatever they want to do and say whatever they want to say. It was just hard for me for a lot of t long time having people make jokes about something that, like, that affected my life so negatively and caused me to not be able to eat <laughs> for a long time or not be able to leave my house at some points or not feel safe or just feel very like feel very broken in the sense of the word but I'm not I don't want to go too much into that this is an educational video and I just want to talk a little about my experience and a little bit about just definitions and not go too much <laughs> into my own personal drama that no one needs to worry about but 
Um, I was on medication for a year whenever I was, like I said, 11 or 12, and then it took me off of it because I don't think I liked how I... Sometimes medication just makes you feel weird. I can't remember that much. I can't remember much of that year at all, and one of my friends joked that that's probably why I was taking off the medication because I can't remember much of that year. But yeah, you know, for most people you just have to try different medications. I was young, my body was changing, so it was a hard time for me to figure that out. So, obsessions or intrusive thoughts, that's kind of a synonym, are thoughts you have that are very distressing to you. So they can be something like your family dying or like, um, you know, like, oh, a lot of commonly seen ones are like, oh, I left the, like, my stove on or I left my curling iron on and I'll set a fire. And many people do have these thoughts who don't have OCD, but people with OCD can't get past these thoughts. Even if you have checked it, sometimes I'll lock my car and I'll walk away from my car. But while I was walking my car, I didn't specifically think my car is locked. I didn't, like, even though I know I locked it, I didn't specifically reassure myself and I have to go back and check again because what if I didn't, <laughs> even though I know I did. Um, another thing about these thoughts is people with OCD know that they are irrational thoughts. So intrusive thoughts are just like uncomfortable thoughts. They don't always um, appear as coherent thoughts. Sometimes they're just feelings like um, something feeling off or feeling wrong and you can't even specifically voice what it is that's off or wrong. It just is. The other part of OCD is compulsions. Some people have pure O OCD which is just pure obsessions, which means they don't have any compulsions. And for a while I thought, this is what I have, but then around sophomore year, things really started manifesting in a different way and a lot faster and like more rapidly than it had before. So whenever I walk, and it's been like this since like freshman year or maybe before that, I, whenever I walk, I have to take an even amount of steps before I step over any crack in the sidewalk, any change in surface, so like if I go from tile to hardwood, if I like am stepping from grass to concrete, any like different change in surface, any pattern, if there, like I said, if there's a crack, if there's like a line, anything, I have to take an even amount of steps before I step over it. And I don't have any logical explanation as to why. I just do. <laughs> it's just something in my brain. If I don't do that, I feel off. It's like my feet will feel like they're on fire. <laughs> which sounds dramatic, but it's like, it's really hard to explain. It's just something that it just, you know, in the core of your being that something's wrong and you just want to do whatever you can to fix it. And so even though these thoughts are rational, like obviously there's nothing wrong with me taking an uneven amount of steps before I step over the sidewalk, something in me feels off and it's just easier to do it instead of making myself feel uncomfortable because you never want to feel uncomfortable in these situations if you can help it. So that's one of my compulsions. Compulsions are, like I said, things you have to do in order to alleviate your intrusive thoughts. Something I have is that anytime I have like a intrusive thought or a bad thought, um, I pray and I tap my fingers together. And luckily my, some people's compulsions are very obvious and very like noticeable by everyone. And luckily mine aren't too noticeable and I'm very good at doing it like pretty on the down low but I'll tap my, usually my pointer finger, my thumb together. And it's evolved a lot. It started tapping, like started from knocking on wood and it went to just tapping and then it went to tapping my fingers. So if I can, I'll try to make something into a smaller version of it was what it was before. And then I, I'll pray at the same time. And um, this type of OCD is called scrupulosity OCD. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but like I said, I'll put more down below and you can go to this website and look it up. But that is religious OCD. It manifests itself in a lot of different ways too. But for me, anytime I have a bad thought or if I think something bad or if I feel like a bad person or if I've done something wrong, um, I pray the same thing. And I'm not going to <laughs> say it now, but I'll, I'll repeat it. And sometimes if things are really bad, I'll repeat it over and over again. And I'll tap over and over and over again in even numbers, sets of two. And I'll do each set of two twice so that it's an even amount of sets of two. Um, Everything's in sets of twos for me because that's my how I like think of even things.
things in my head. I also do things like I start with my right side first because it's more even side, which doesn't make sense obviously, but in my head that's how I think of it. So if I'm putting my contacts, it'll go right first, or if I'm putting on my shoes, I'll do the right foot first and then go from there because my right side is my even side. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting kind of nervous and I'm rambling and I'm sure some of this doesn't really make sense. But um, I just wanted to bring some awareness to OCD and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about my journey with anxiety and about like getting better. Some facts about OCD, just to derail from my personal self for a second. Um, the OCD ribbon is teal. That's why I like teal in case anyone is wondering. My favorite color is yellow, but one of my like other favorite, well, favorite colors are pink and teal and the reason that has been my favorite color or like one of my favorite colors and the reason why I liked it so much was because it was the OCD awareness ribbon it was just my little way of like supporting <laughs> myself <laughs> and other people like me I don't want to go into in depth into all of my um all of my compulsions because they're I just you know you don't need to hear that but so my journey like I said I was diagnosed about 11 or 12 and I was on medicine for a year, and then I was off of it. And back then, like I said, the first thing I had was germophobia, and I had it very bad. And as that progressed, like through my life, your OCD can evolve and change. I do have memories as early as when I was like four or five of having rituals, another word for in, um, compulsions, having these rituals that I would do anytime I did something wrong, I would say the same thing over and over again in my head. And I never realized back then, obviously, I was so young, but now that I think about it when I was older, I realized this is something I've lived with my whole life. It's just gotten a little bit more severe as my life has gone on because things have changed and I've been going through a lot of stressful times in my life and that just can, it, like I said, it's an anxiety-based disorder, so it does help make that worse. Um, I went to middle school and then I think a big shifting point in my OCD was in high school, sophomore year. Sophomore year was one of the worst years of my life. And again, I'm not going to delve into all my personal information. This is just about OCD and giving you a little bit of a look into what that is for me and what that might be for other people out there. So sophomore year was just horrible, horrible year for me. And um, so I obviously went through a lot more anxiety that year. My OCD began to manifest itself in different ways. Before that, I didn't have the tapping, I didn't have the praying, I didn't have a lot of the stuff that I still do now and that I continue to, probably will continue to do for a while now. But sophomore year was also the year that I realized things needed to change because there was no way I could live like this anymore. Um, yeah, sophomore year was a really hard year. Oh goodness. <laughs> and. Um, I wanted to change. So, um, beginning in Texas, mental health is very stigmatized. And even in like my own family, it was kind of a weird thing to talk about. Even like with my friends, I've never been good at telling people what's going on in my life. So I didn't want to tell anyone really until sophomore year, <laughs> whenever I knew that I needed to do something or else I wasn't sure um, what would happen to me. So <laughs> I went through that year and then beginning of junior year, I was still, still going strong with that anxiety and um, I decided I needed to get help. And I did, and that, like, about halfway through junior year, I finally did. And I'll have another video on that, but it was, like, talking, actually, like, talking to someone about how I felt was really, um, it was really good for me, because I was very much so just bottled things up. <laughs> That's all I did. So... That was a big change in my life. And now I've gone through all this time. It is now my freshman year of college. I am still here. I am still alive. Um, and so like I said, there are other things I've dealt with in my life, but OCD has really been the centerfold of a lot of them. 
and has been the main thing of a lot of them. And um, I just want anyone who watches this video, I know I don't have a lot of people who watch my videos, but if anyone does, and maybe you have OCD or if you know someone who does in your life, maybe talk to them about it. Do as much research as you can about it. Um, something I like to do as soon as I found, not as soon as, but pretty much as soon as I found out I had OCD, um, not even, not that long after, I did a lot of research about what it was and it made me feel better knowing that I knew what was happening with me and I could be able to explain it to a lot of people. So my sophomore year, I did a project on OCD. I made that video that I posted a while ago about it, which I want to redo because it's not good. <laughs> but the idea of it is there. And I got to write poems on my OCD and I got to draw pictures about how it felt and I got to show that to people and really try to explain what it really meant and how it was not just about being organized or about being clean or whatever people think it is, that it's so much more. Um, so just, yeah, try to ask how you can help them and sometimes they don't need help, sometimes they just need someone to be there for them, but actually be there for them. Like, don't just disappear on them as soon as they tell you that they need help, because that's not right. So, long rant aside, um, if anyone watches this and needs, like, someone to talk to, I have linked some of my social media below, I have, you can comment below, I do have an email for this account that I also will put below, so if you want to just email me about it, or just DM me <laughs> on one of my social media platforms. Um, you can feel free to do that and I will talk to you about it as much as you want and this is something that's like near and dear to me because even though it's something that's been really hard for me to deal with and it's been a really hard part of my life it is a part of me and sometimes I don't know what I'd be without it obviously happier at some points but also it's um, made me have a different way of thinking and of viewing the world and of viewing other people so yes just reach out to me. I, I know a lot of people say, like I said, I know a lot of people say that you can reach out to them and you can't, but especially about this, even if you don't have it, if you just want to know more about it, please, please reach out to me. I love um, helping other people learn more about um, obsessive compulsive disorder. And like I said, I will link that website down below that has all of that important information in it because it's just, it's such a good resource. And it's really good to be educated on this stuff, even if you don't have it, just to be able to help um, keep the ignorant people out. Because <laughs> there's, it's just better. The more people that know, the better it is. So yes, OCD Awareness Week is the October 17th week. And um, I'll link other resources down below. I might do a couple of videos about OCD, if not, then maybe I won't, but maybe we'll do more next year. This is my first real one talking about what's been going on. I'm sorry if that was kind of a mess. I'm not good about talking about my life and myself, so I didn't know really where to go with that. And maybe I'll talk more about that stuff in the future. But I just wanted to share a little bit of my OCD story and a little bit about what it is so people understand more. Anyways, okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess if you guys liked any of this stuff you can just check it out if not that's okay i just thought it was cute <laughs> and it's very soft i like soft jackets and things so okie dokie alrighty Rue. i'm bellaboo and i'll see you later bye bye